Now we're going to take a look at our soil and packaging costs. And this sheet can be a little complex, so we'll go through it slowly and so everything makes uh, sense. So on a commercial scale, you're often buying soil in bulk. And part of that bulk is you're paying for delivery. And so you want to calculate basically, you know, I've got all this soil, but I want to know the value of one tray worth and one specific size tray if you have multiple size trays. So that's what the sheet does. And it does the same thing for soil as well as like fiber mats if you're using fiber mats. And you can choose between the two as we looked at it in the crop, uh, crop data sheet. So let's just look at soil as an example. If I bring in 10 yards of soil and it costs me $65 a yard, and this I just put 65, but I'm going to do uh, actually just for fun equals 65 times 1.12. So I'm including the two taxes I would pay for that soil actually here. Um, my delivery fee is $250 because it's a very big load of soil and it's coming from far away. Then my cost for that um, soil is $978. Now, this breaks things down into cubic centimeters uh, per yard because I need to break it down to a small unit and then I can go from a cubic centimeter to whatever volume a tray is. So that's what these ridiculously big numbers are here. And in that regard, I get this price here of, you know, 0.00013, you know, dollars uh, per cubic centimeter of soil. So you don't really need to know that stuff. This is just what's happening in the back, background. So the $72.80 uh, per yard um, uh, soil uh, with delivery comes up to $97.80. Now, how much that's going to cost per tray now depends on the size of the tray. And so this spreadsheet comes preloaded with a bunch of tray sizes. These are the ones we looked at earlier in the uh, crops section, and they show up in the summaries as well. So you, you just have this here. And then the dimensions here, which are converted into centimeters, are already in here. And so I actually just went and measured these at one point, and you should do the same to make sure you're accurate. Then it calculates your volume and your area and all that stuff. Um, so. Um, so it's accurate and so we know what it costs for soil now these are 10 by 20 and 10 by 10 and 20 by 20 those ironically enough are in inches in in the imperial system they're not part of the calculations because they're just names why i left that in there is because it's generally convention even here in canada to call these 10 20 trays 10 20 trays uh, but for the purposes here and so we're consistent in our measurements we're converting to metric and one of the reasons is metric is just so much easier to work in because everything's multiples of 10. Uh, the calculations and conversions are, are much much easier. So here I've put in the dimensions because this is green and I'm allowed to put information in here and so you can see for a 10 by 20 tray it costs about 75 cents per tray of soil uh, when it's 1.25 inches deep. The 10 20 tray that's two inches deep costs about a buck 20 Again, a 20 by 20 tray is about a buck 26 at two inches deep. So the, there's all these factors to consider. And so because these trays all have different volume, they all have a different uh, amount of soil in them. Now, this there's a bunch of stuff that goes into this calculation. And you'll notice, usually you'll see like a list of costs and the total at the bottom. I tend to put my totals at the beginning of everything. You'll probably have noticed that the totals are at the top, not at the bottom because it's the totals you want. So having to scroll down to them does not make sense. So to get to this number, there's a few things to consider. First is our dimensions, like we've just talked about. And then there's two more things here, and I call them the multiplier and the tray fill. And they're all set to 20% and 100%. So let's start with the multiplier. The reason you'd use the multiplier is if you get a big load of soil in and it's really, really loose, and you start packing it into trays, that 10 yards of soil is only going to fill up, say, eight yards worth of trays over time because you're compacting it more in. Whereas if you get like a really compacted bale of peat moss and then you loosen that up, it's actually going to, it's actually going to fill more trays because you're not going to pack it in as densely. So uh, what I do here is this multiplier. And for, as an example, for one of our soils that we got in for a while, 
we were actually losing about 40% of that. We were packing it in so much and it came so loose. So this was really important for um, being accurate. So I just put this multiplier at 20%. If you find your, your calculations are quite accurate and 10 yards of your soil is giving you 10 yards worth of trays, then you don't need to use the multiplier at all. It also acts as a buffer. If this multiplier is zero, my soil per, per cost per tray goes down. And theoretically, I want to have that tray higher in my numbers, and then hopefully in real life it comes through lower. So I'm budgeting conservatively as if things are going to be more expensive. Now tray fill comes in with these deeper trays. So maybe I'm using a 10 by 20 tray, but I'm only filling it up halfway, and therefore I'm only doing it 50% full, and then it's going to bring the cost down quite a bit. The same as my one inch tray, of course, because now it's only an inch deep. So, um, so yeah, that just allows you to make those adjustments. And that might be, uh, yeah, yeah, that's basically it. So you're just using that to adjust. So this is if you're, when you're getting your soil in your tray, it becomes more compacted than when you got it. And this is basically, if you are only filling your trays halfway, you can adjust this. So with mats, uh, this is kind of assuming, and I took these numbers from a, a product I found online, uh, converted it from inches into centimeters, where the mat was 25 centimeters wide, but it was 3,600 centimeters long because it was in a roll. And so from that, I get my area of, of mats, and I can calculate basically per centimeter cubed, you know, what my cost is. And what you'll see right away here is the cost of a mat per centimeters cubed is, um, actually this should be centimeters squared for this one, because that is the case. We're just talking area there. Um, our price per centimeter squared is uh, 0 0.01. Zero zero one three dollars. So it's it's much more significantly um, cheaper here. Now you you might say, well, we can't compare area to volume, but in a way we can because we could just say that uh, the 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 height of this is one. So the the area and the volume are are basically the same in a way. Um, and because th there is no volume, like there's no depth, there's no like you know, thick, you know, thick mat or thin mat. Theoretically there is, but those would be different products. So basically mats are expensive is what I'm saying. Um, but in some cases it might be the only option you have. Uh, if you've nowhere to store soil or store your uh, compost, if you live in a very rural area where you can't get soil shipped to you, but you can get Amazon to send you some fiber mats, then that's what you should use. Um, yeah, that, and then in here, Basically, from our earlier things, we had an estimation of the number of trays we were going to sow. This tells you the amount of soil you're going to need, and this will tell you how much uh, area of match you need. I just need to put that formula back in. So you can see throughout the season, I'm going to need about 35 yards of soil. So I, I need to start thinking about that because that's going to have a significant cost over time. So this is our soil section here. The same thing exists for our mats here. And so we've got all the same uh, tray names here. They just copy from up there. Uh, the dimensions are very much the same. Now I have a multiplier here as well. And the reason I did that, contrary to what I just told you up here, is for some reason you might use two mats. You might find layering two mats of something works better. And so that's basically um, what you would put in there. And then you can see here, as we look at our 1020, that's one and a quarter inches deep, our, our uh, cost is about $2.13, so it's about three times what you're paying for for this one here at uh, 75 cents. So again, like it's not a big cost, but these costs add up when you're growing 4,000 trays. So, or yeah, 4,000 trays. So you spend a lot of money on this stuff over time is what you start to learn. Okay, so packaging. Packaging in a way is quite simple. Uh, if you've got small, medium, and large packaging, you're buying that in some sort of bulk. So when you put in the number of units you get and the price you pay, that gives you a price per unit for your small, medium, and large packing. Uh, you generally are probably going to need a label, so this accounts for the label as well. So that's just built in there. And so you get a total price here, and these just end up being 40, 50, and 60 cents each. 
Now your large packaging may not actually be more expensive. Uh, for clamshells, we did like a small and medium clamshell, but for our large bulk stuff, we just used a produce bag. And so our large stuff actually came in a much cheaper package, ironically, because it's, it's much simpler. It doesn't have a fancy label or any of that stuff. It's just going to a restaurant that you've already done your marketing to. And the reason you want a nice clamshell and a nice label in the in the in the in the grocer is because you're marketing your product with that that packaging. You're not just packaging it for freshness. So that's a big difference. So this is a quite an easy calculation there, and this will copy into other sections. Um, seed sanitizer. So in the past, I had it so for the the seed and the trays you sowed, it would calculate the precise cost of seed sanitizer. And it's quite complex to do that. So I have this here so you can use this and get a sense of what the pricing is per milliliter of sanitizer that you use. But I would put sanitizer in my overhead costs and not do an exact calculation. It's not a big enough expense in any one year, I think, to warrant uh, the kind of uh, uh, troubles it would cause in a spreadsheet like this. Yeah, so this is again, we got our soil and mats costs. We've got our packaging costs and then a sense of our sanitizers there. So these things add up over time. And once we've finished our pricing, we'll take a look at these, what these costs look like at the end of the season. So after soil and packaging, now let's go take a look at seed, which is in a sheet all by itself.